Hi there, my name is Jasmine Delajani, and I'll be giving a presentation on calcium channel blockers. So some general information, the uses for calcium channel blockers, also called dihydropyridines, is to support the treatment of mild to moderate hypertension. It treats stable or exertional angina and variant or vasospastic anginas. It's also the first line of treatment of hypertension for African Americans. The prototype drug is nifedipine. Other drugs include verapamil and diltiazem. The expected pharmacological actions is to block calcium channels in muscle cells as well as cardiac muscle cells, vasodilation of the arterioles, not the veins. It decreases blood pressure, increases coronary perfusion, and indirectly increases heart rate by lowering blood pressure. Some side effects include reflex tachycardia, causing increased pain in patients with angina, lightheadedness, dizziness, and facial flushing caused by vasodilation, peripheral edema of feet and hands and legs, hypotension, especially with overdose, and gingival hyperplasia, which is growth of gum tissue and bleeding of the gums. Over here is this nice picture to the left of the actions and the side effects. The action is to block calcium access to cells, causing decreased contractility and decreased conductivity of the heart. It also decreases the demand for oxygen. The side effects include decre decreased blood pressure, bradycardia, which is low heart rate, may precipitate a V-block, headache, abdominal discomfort, which, such as constipation or nausea, and that peripheral edema of the feet, hands, or legs. Some interventions is to give nifedipine along with a beta blocker to prevent reflex tachycardia, monitor the heart rate, report lightheadedness, dizziness, or edema, inform the patient that facial flushing may occur, monitor blood pressure carefully as dosage is established, report and withhold dose for blood pressure below 9 milliliters of mercury systolic or other prearranged parameters, inspect the gingival tissue periodically for enlargement, and advise regular dental care. So over here is an example of that gingival hyperplasia before and after, hypotension below 90 over 60. Administration of calcium channel blockers comes in a variety of forms. It's available for oral use in capsules, tablets, and sustained release tablets. It also has availability in IV form, which is diltiazem and verapamil. To prevent reflex tachycardia, nifedipine may be combined with a beta blocker as discussed before. And it's very important to know that sustained release tablets must be swallowed whole and cannot be chewed or crushed. Nifedipine. So nifedipine affects blood vessels but not the heart. It's a part of the dihydropyridine class along with amlodipine and nicardipine. The uses is for angina pictoris or hypertension. It causes vasodilation, increased heart rate and contraction. Adverse reactions include flushing, edema, swelling of the hands and feet, rash, constipation, dyspnea, headache, reflex tachycardia, therefore combined with beta blocker to prevent that. Caution is that nifedipine is immediately released into the blood, so it may cause immediate hypotension. It also may increase the risk for myocardial infarction, dysrhythmias, heart failure, and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Do not give to elderly. It causes baroreceptor trauma or hypotension. It's contraindicated in hypersensitivity, sick sinus syndrome, second or third degree heart block. Um, systolic blood pressure of below 90, heart failure, severe ventricular dysfunction, or cardiogenic shock, and co-administration with grapefruit juice, rifampin, phenobarbital, or St. John's wort is not advised. Nursing interventions. Instruct the client to swallow the sustained release tablet whole. Also teach them to increase fiber intake to prevent constipation. Avoid administration with grapefruit juice. Teach the client and family members about how to check the pulse and if heart rate is less than 50 beats per minute, contact a healthcare provider immediately and do not take the medication. Caution the patient to change positions slowly to minimize orthostatic hypotension. Also, for geriatric patients, teach them about fall risks and how to reduce that in the home. Some route and dosage information is that nifedipine is by mouth. Adults can take 10 to 30 milligrams three times a day, not to exceed 180 milligrams per day. There's also information about the sustained release forms. 
Availability is generic. There's capsules, tablets, and extended release tablets. The capsules come in 5 milligrams in Canada, 10 milligram, 20 milligram in the US, and the tablets come 10 milligrams for Canada. Extended release tablets come in 10 milligram and 20 milligram for Canada, and then United States has 30, 60, and 90 milligrams. So verapamil and diltiazem, they affect blood vessels as well as the heart. They are a part of the non-dihydropyridine class. Verapamil is a phenylalkylamine class and diltiazem is benzothiazepine class. The uses is for angina pectoris, essential hypertension, and dysrhythmias, or AFib. It causes vasodilation, decreases heart rate and contraction, and decreases AV conduction. Some adverse reactions include flushing, edema, irregular heartbeats, dyspnea, dizziness, headache, nausea, constipation, bradycardia, AV block, so it's contraindicated for second or third degree, and reflex tachycardia is not likely to occur with verapamil and diltiazem. The cautions are is that verapamil and diltiazem interact with digoxin, so it increases risk for heart block. Beta blockers cause bradycardia, and grapefruit juice makes it a toxic uh, drug level in the blood. An overdose of these medications can cause severe hypotension and heart block. Um, you can use activated charcoal to treat this toxicity. It's contraindicated in hypersensitivity, sick sinus syndrome, second or third degree heart block, systolic blood pressure below 90, heart failure, severe ventricular dysfunction, or cardiogenic shock. Some nursing interventions, just like nifedipine, do not open, crush, break, or chew sustained release capsules. Instruct the patient to increase fiber, avoid administration with grapefruit juice. Teach the client how to monitor the heart rate. If it's below 50, contact the healthcare provider immediately and do not take the medication. Caution patients to change positions very slowly to minimize orthostatic hypotension. And for geriatric patients, also teach them about fall risks. For Apamil, the route and dosage is either PO or IV. Adults can take 80 to 120 milligrams three times a day. You may increase as needed. And then for diltiazem, the route and dosage is also by mouth or IV. There's extended release forms for both for Apamil and diltiazem. For by mouth for diltiazem, adults can take 30 to 120 milligrams three to four times daily. Patient instruction. It's very important for nurses to teach patients about how to report and recognize a rapid heartbeat and to tell their providers about increased angina pain. Do not perform hazardous activities such as driving until effects are known. Teach the patient to be aware that facial flushing may occur. Report swelling of feet, legs, dizziness, and syncope. Take as prescribed, do not increase dosage. Report bleeding gums or gum tissue growth and obtain regular dental care. Contraindications and precautions include allergy to nifedipine, acute MI, angina, which is unstable, aortic stenosis, obstruction, and gastrointestinal tract, and children are also contraindicated for calcium channel blockers. Precautions are for heart failure and gastroesophageal reflux disease. Some interactions is that when calcium channel blockers are used with beta blockers, it may increase the risk for heart failure. However, it can prevent reflex tachycardia, except for nifedipine, which may cause it. Calcium channel blockers may increase digoxin blood levels. Melatonin increases blood pressure pulse rate. Ginkgo biloba and ginseng increase blood levels. St. John's worth decreases blood levels, and grapefruit juice may increase blood levels. So the safety alert with grapefruit juice is that to teach the patients if they're going to drink that to wait four to five hours after administration to drink grapefruit juice because grapefruit juice inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme in the liver that breaks down certain drugs. The danger there results from potential for toxicity of these drugs and enhancement of their side effects due to increased serum levels. So here I have some NCLEX style questions. I have three. So I'm going to um, read it out loud and then give uh, you guys a moment to pause the video and think about it. Then the answer, answers will be at the very end. So which of the following calcium channel blockers is associated with causing gingival hyperplasia?
Is it A, verapamil, B, nifedipine, C, diltiazem, or D, all of the above? So I'll let you pause right now. All right, number two, what race are calcium channel blockers more effective in? Native Americans, Caucasians, African Americans, Hispanic or Latino origins, or Middle Easterners? So I'll give you a moment to press pause. Number three, how do calcium channel blockers work in the body? Select all that apply. A, blocks calcium access to the cells. B, enhances the action of calcium in the heart. C, decreases blood pressure. D, dilates arteries. E, dilates veins. I'm going to give a moment to press pause. Okay, so the answers are for number one, D, all of the above, because gingival, gingival hyperplasia occurs with all calcium channel blockers, but it's most associated with verapamil. Two is C, so calcium channel blockers are highly effective antihypertensive agents for African Americans. And number three, the answer is A, C, and D, so it blocks calcium access to the cells, decreases blood pressure, and dilates arteries. It does not have an effect on the veins, and it also decreases the action of calcium in the heart. All right, here are my references. And below I have some very helpful YouTube videos that I found, and I'll post these links for the videos in the information box below. Thank you guys so much. Bye.